I did watch Sean Foy show something today on Twitter that just really, really got me. It's John MacArthur's response. You know, John MacArthur, by the way, I like John MacArthur. Oh, he's crotchety and he's missed it on the baptism. He's, he, he's a fighting fundamentalist. He is, he thinks tongues is, I don't know, uh, we're lunatics. The tongues has passed away. We're speaking gibberish and miracles are, guess, gone and healing's gone. He, he has his own heroes and his heroes are actually, uh, ironically, the books are my shelf, Calvin and John Knox and Charles Spurgeon. Uh, but he can't stand any of the modern day charismatics. He thinks it's all weak. He thinks mega churches are, are foo foo and, and they've all, and it's because of Lonnie Frisbee. I'm getting to something, and the Asbury Revival, and the Jesus Movement. He's just lumping it all together as being, and so you just got to hear how he thinks. You got to understand, MacArthur was one of the few guys that refused to shut his church down. So this is a guy who will, he'll, he'll, he's, like a, he's like a crotchety old martyr, if he has to be. He'll, he reminds me like a Tyndale or somebody who would take on the king and then die. I'm not moving. But listen to what he says. This other stream of evangelicalism goes back about to 1966. 1966, when the hippies came out of San Francisco, showed up in Orange County, joined Calvary Chapel, and we had the launch of an informal, barefoot, beach, drug-induced kind of young people that told the church how the church should happen, how it should act. Hymns went out, suits went out. For the first time in the history of the church, the conduct of the church was conformed to a subculture. I right, hold it right there. This really bothers him. Now the hymns went out. I got to admit, I got to admit that uh, there are the hymns, the great hymns, the crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne, praise thy name in earth and skies. There's, there's a certain majesty and theological profundity and power in hymns, admittedly more profound than... I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. <laughs> but if you're doing children's church, a mighty fortress is our God isn't going to go over as well. But you get the point. And, you know, if you, if you want to get a sloppy wet kiss, you're not going to get it from John MacArthur's lyrics like we have with our, our vineyard songs. But uh, the worship movement certainly doesn't come out of MacArthur. It comes out of other stuff. But his criticism is the reverence for God. But... Uh, John Wimber, who was the Calvary Chapel guy and then Vineyard, he refers to. Wimber, he basically said, let's put on casual shirt and let's take some of the... He was coming against the A.A. A. Allen uh, kind of like wild Pentecostalism. You know, that kind of sweating uh, and preaching uh, and laying hands on the people uh, and God Almighty is moving. And I love that. I mean, if you want to stir people up, you got to have that. But Wimber was kind of like trying to be laid back. He was going to be laid back and he was going to try to open up Christianity with his Hawaiian shirts to, uh, uh, he says, it's going to be less about the, the sensationalism of Pentecostals and more laid back. Randy Clark, Bill Johnson, Heidi Baker, all came out. Toronto came out of the laid back Jesus movement in the Bermuda shorts and the sandals and just getting words and knowledge and trying to de, in a sense, make Christianity accessible to the masses. But uh, I do long for a bit of the primitive Christian revival. Let's hear what John MacArthur said. That was born in LSD and marijuana in San Francisco, migrated to Southern California. It's a completely different stream. That launches the informal, culturally driven, culturally defined, give them what they want kind of church that ends up in the seeker-friendly church, takes a branch in the vineyard, and the vineyard leads to the excesses of the contemporary charismatic movement. That's a completely different stream. That's not our stream. Those aren't our heroes. I don't go back to Lonnie Frisbee, who led the Jesus movement and died of AIDS as a homosexual. I don't go back there. That's not my stream. But that's the stream that has produced the culturally bound, culturally driven, seeker-driven church movement. And while there are good and bad and, and better and best and worst elements of it, that's where it comes from. We, we're very different, very different. Our heroes are very different.
We know who our people are. And if, you're say, if you say you're on this side and you are on this side, then you have a responsibility to be faithful to this marvelous history. Okay, so some of you are asking, I'm reading your, your, your chat threads, you're going, who is this guy? Come on, wake up, John MacArthur. You got to know who John MacArthur is. You got to know who your friends and your enemies are theologically. John MacArthur is a, one of the best, most staunch, stand your ground, fundamentalist evangelicals, but he hates the gifts, hates the, does, does, can literally do it. This is a guy who knows the Bible so well, he can abuse it and, and speak Greek and Hebrew to tell you why tongues has ceased. And what are you going to say to a guy like that? Tongues has ceased. I only thing I could say is, I say, Lord, bless him. I pray for him. Tongues have ceased. Well, explain to me what happened to me on that day when I couldn't ablo Paco out of the university dad. I was flunking Spanish. I had a linguistic problem. And someone comes up to me and goes, would you like a prayer language? I go, ha, lots of luck that's going to be. I, I had to take Spanish in summer school. Just couldn't conjugate those verbs properly in El Espanol. And the next thing you know, they're praying for me and laying hands on me. And their hands are on me. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to get anything. I'm not going to get anything. And something starts bubbling up in the inside of me. And I'm not going to get anything. And oh, God. And I read Robert Frost was a nuclear physicist write his testimony about how he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God knew I needed to read a physicist. I mean, just because it made me feel safer, I guess, because the guy's, he's smart. So I'm thinking, oh, come on, Robert Frost, nuclear physicist. I've been reading these testimonies. I really want to be filled with the Spirit of God. I, I, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. I'm not, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. As I'm saying, I'm not getting it. I could hear a language coming out of my mouth. A pure Mediterranean kind of articulation. My ears were hearing it. My tongue was fluid. And as I'm going and going in this exotic beautiful language, I'm saying to myself, I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting anything. I'm not, this is amazing. I'm telling you the three phases of the devil's lies. You're not going to get it. Then when you're getting it, you're not getting it. And then after I got it, what do you think the devil said? You didn't get anything. I thought, I did so. I'm arguing with myself. It's like, no, you didn't. You got nothing. You're not going to get it. You didn't get it. And nothing happened. I go, something did happen. And I have friends of mine kept saying, Lance, you got to keep praying. You got to keep praying. I'll tell you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is why I know John MacArthur's. This poor, this poor guy's missing it. Because the devil will rob you of the supernatural. Now, the reason why God used Chuck Smith instead of John MacArthur is because John MacArthur would have been the grumpy old man. He would have looked at that hippie. He would have seen the miracles. He would have said, I question the fruit. Oh, I see thousands of those believers out there. I question if this is legitimate conversion. Because he misses the suits and the hymns. Well, I love the suits too. But I mean, come on. Got a revival and you're going to reject a revival because they're not wearing suits? Wake up and smell the coffee there, John. I suppose if you go to Saudi Arabia and have a revival, you'll be upset because, well, they're all wearing Arab clothes. They're not wearing suits, Lance. And sandals. What are they? The Jesus Movement? Oh, boy. Subscribe right now.